Welcome to the Let Me Save You 25 Year Podcast, where we break down a new Seanism each week in hopes that you can maybe learn from my mistakes and build things even bigger, better, faster than I ever did, perhaps shaving off a decade or two. My book, Let Me Save You 25 Years, comes out later this year. I am your host, Sean D. Nelson, founder of Lovesack, and with me today is a person who transcends cheesy introductions by the sheer force of her own celebrity and indomitable womanhood. She holds the title as the world's youngest female self-made billionaire, inventor of Spanx, champion of women worldwide, longtime friend, mother of four, and in fact, perhaps my closest friend on earth. For at least a week of my life, we spent <laughs> stranded on an island together as we awaited a very distressing outcome. The one and only Sarah Blakely. Hi. Wow, that was the week. I, I'm right back there. I think we figured out Morse code or we talked, communicated oh through gosh. the wall. Okay, so we can reveal now because it's long, like the, the, uh, um, you know, like long past. Confidentiality. <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah, what do they call it? The, like where you can't be convicted of a crime anymore after like the statute of limitations has passed. Has passed. Um, <clears throat> so actually Sarah and I uh, were filming The Rebel Billion. We were on this reality TV show with Richard Branson and we were the finalists and we're, we're on Necker Island, but we're not on Necker Island because it was raining and they had to ship us off to this weird neighboring island where they hold us up in this crappy hotel Right. This is like Fox Network, big production company, huge, you know, because they're waiting for the rain to pass. So they can film the final episode. So we're waiting to figure out who wins this thing. I mean, I think it was like a tropical depression slash hurricane. It was it was major what came through. It was major. Yeah. yeah. Like it was it was it it was causing like national catastrophes in places nearby. And so we're in this weird hotel with uh but did it have like no windows? Like water could come in, right? It had like screens or something, because it was like a tr anyway. And in the Caribbean, and 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 they and they were, and we're sequestered because these shows don't want us talking off camera, yeah. Because Everything they want all the action and drama, camera. right? Yeah, yeah. So Sarah and I they don't realize that our rooms have an adjoining door, <laughs> and we can how, we can. How their de their security detail, which there was none, missed the adjoining door. I mean, it's like, that was so funny when we both got into our rooms so, and we, we hadn't been allowed to communicate with each other off camera for two months. It, oh, so weird. And and but and, and they kept us always sequestered and with the cameras aren't rolling. And here we are for days, and and they're bringing us food, kind of sliding it under the door. It feels like like we're prisoners and. And I learned that Sarah always orders two meals because in case she like she doesn't like the one she anyway. <laughs> we're like brother and sister, by the way. Like lest lest there be any you know concern of impropriety. Brother and sister kind of relationship, totally. just just buddies. We were like felt like the only two sane people on planet Earth because we had been with with this crazy production with some crazy right. people for like two months. And uh, anyway, it was uh, it was a trying and bonding. It, by the end, it was like Sarah didn't, or I didn't even care. Like I don't care who won. I don't care if I won. You won. Just get me out of here. Exactly. I basically had that conversation with Richard. I mean, I was like, Richard, man, you know, whatever. Like I survived, and this is amazing. And wow. So. For people who don't know exactly what we're talking about, Sean and I competed on this Rebel Billionaire reality show that was Richard Branson's kind of version of The Apprentice, but each business challenge took place in a different city around the world. And instead of going to the boardroom, if you didn't do your business challenge right or lost, you had to do like a world record breaking that defined stunt. And I am terrified of heights and I, you know, I had to do the craziest stuff and Sean and I somehow out of like 16 or 18 entrepreneurs were the last two standing on Necker Island and we forged a great friendship and wow, we went through a lot together. Like I remember when I went to sign up for this, this show, Sean, I sent the contract to my dad, who's a trial attorney. It was 27 pages long. It literally said in the contract, I don't know if you remember, like, we can submerge you underwater, we can light yeah. you on fire, we can drop you in political unrest, you can be with this wild animals, unsupervised. I sent it to my dad and I was like, hey, dad, can you help me kind of like edit this and, you know, negotiate it? And Sean, all he wrote back was, no sane person would sign this, love dad. 
<laughs> That's it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But this and actually I signed leads it. to the huh? yeah the topic of of the first shamanism in the book. Let me save you twenty five years. Just do something, right? And so yeah. you signed it. I signed it. I signed, I signed it against it. the advice of my lawyers. My dad was like, no sane person would sign this, but I just did it. You know, I, I, I measure, I measure my decisions though. When I make a deci decision to just do something, I do have a bias for action. I think the reason why a lot of people don't just do something is because they are waiting to be ready. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like, I think a lot of yeah. people think I need to know more. I need to have more time. I need to have yeah. more contacts. Yes. I need to have more money. And the reality is everything that crosses your mind of something that you're compelled to possibly do, um, you know, you're never going to feel ready. And yeah. I think oh, that's like, so good. Uh,